Hi guys, this is Adam Jones from London Perch Finder. Thanks very much for tuning in to my latest YouTube video. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks very much for all of your feedback, uh, likes and subscribes on my other videos. Um, this video is kind of a follow on from the last few. It's been uh, inspired by questions and uh, ideas that you guys have sent me through Instagram from various posts that I've done and obviously from the videos about things that you want to see, um, things that you want to know, questions that I can answer or at least kind of show you what I'm doing so that you can make up your minds and do it your way uh, and hopefully catch a lot of great fish in the process. So today is a I suppose an introduction to the Ned Rig. If you've already heard of the Ned Rig, it's going to be a video about me fishing the Ned Rig, uh, my thought process and kind of what it is I'm thinking about doing, searching for when I'm fishing the Ned Rig, um, and a little bit about the Z-Man baits that I've been doing it on for the last couple of years and how I'm singling out those bigger fish. So those are the questions. People wanted to know how to single out bigger fish. They wanted to know where to find the big perch that kind of where's your spots how do you find your spots those are the questions I've been getting so I've come to a new section of canal that I've never fished before uh, I found it on Google Maps I researched it online found out that it was owned by a club that it's a day ticket water day tickets on the bank tick parked my car in a car park that I found again on Google Maps made sure I could stay there made sure there was no gates that lock that's one thing to remember do not drive into a car park and get locked in like I have done in the past um, and there's some really good perch holding uh, sections on this bit of canal that I've seen from Google Maps so never fished it might not catch anything hopefully there are a few fish if there aren't it's going to be a really interesting video about baits on the bottom with no fish but we'll give it a go anyway um, so in terms of the baits I suppose the concept I want in my head if you're going to your local tackle shop or you're going to my local tackle shop, Harefield Tackle um, in Harefield, uh, or you're going online, Top of Manor, Predator Tackle UK, there's loads of other places out there, um, and you want to get into fishing Z-Man baits, and you don't know what to buy, and there's a, a kind of whole wall of things that you can get, and it all seems a little bit too much, what should I go to the shop and buy? So, first thing is two packets of Ned Rig Shrooms Jig Heads, probably uh, a 110 ounce which is just under three grams and if you want to fish something heavier obviously a packet of heavier ones um, and then a packet of z-man lures so you've got the finesse trd now this is kind of where the ned rig started these are a sausage shaped bait uh, don't really resemble anything in particular apart from a kind of i don't know a chopped worm maybe or a sausage um, these bounce obviously along the bottom and imitate crayfish fish rummaging around in the deck it doesn't really matter what they look like the perch absolutely love them and you will catch fish on them there's a load of different colors so i'd grab a packet that you're comfortable with in terms of colors grab one of them uh, i've got the trd craws now i have a huge amount of confidence in these baits um i've been fishing them for a year and a half now these are awesome and absolutely slay perch uh you used to catch a lot in the deal i've got the black blue color here they all work, they're brilliant. Find again the one that suits you, suits your eyes, suits your section of canal. Uh, so I've just seen a fish top over there. Um, and try some of these as well. Really, really good baits. Uh, I've got the TRD Bugs, which are new this year. Again, very similar to the TRD Craws. Don't have the kind of two craw pincers. They've got almost like a kind of flapping um, paddle taily type thing that sits out the top of them. They fish really nicely weedless. Uh, loads of different colors the June bug color is an absolute killer um, but they all work again really cool baits and then the TRD ticklers now you've probably seen that I fished these a little bit in my recent Xander video uh, these are slightly smaller profile than the finesse TRDs that I showed you at the beginning uh, they've got some little tentacles a bit like the TRD tubes so they're slightly bigger than the TRD tubes they're slightly smaller than the finesse TRDs I'm going to slip over my words in a minute but i haven't yet uh they've got a little bit of action they bounce and roll really nicely as you you bring them back loads of cool colors bubble gut has been getting it done for me xander perch pike uh, but there's some really really good ones out there so again try a packet of those um like i said there are loads of ways to fish these baits i'm going to start with the ned rig because that's how i started and then i moved on to you know using it on a texas rig i'd fish it with a bullets uh, z-man weedless jig head um loads of different options out there Cheb rig works really well um but we're going to start with this the ned rig so this is a finesse room concept behind this is it hits the deck the bait which is super buoyant super durable floats up and uh, that's when you get a lot of your your hits so all you're doing is just casting it in kind of tap tap let it bounce along the bottom stop the bait rises up nothing tap tap 
same again, bounces up, bait rises up on the bottom, tap tap, boom. Now it's the best, it's one of the best takes out there for big perch. It does single out the bigger fish. The way that I visualize it is the bigger ones sitting kind of on the bottom, checking out the lie of the land, the smaller ones buzzing around trying to catch everything. Um, same as, you know, kids in, in McDonald's running around the little play area whilst their parents are just sat on the table, slowly eating their burger. This is the same concept for perch. This is the burger. You're trying to single out the big mamas, the big dads, um, and it works really well. So hopefully the video is interesting. Hopefully it answers a few questions. Please keep sending in your questions. Please keep giving me your feedback. I'm really enjoying making the videos. I'm so pleased and proud uh, that you're enjoying watching them. Um, I've got it on the Speed Style BF Old Baron BFSXG. Hopefully we catch some fish. Let's get out there. I'll keep you guys posted. Right, so I'm out on the canal. I am fishing the Ned Rig, as you can see. Uh, I've put a TRD Craws on there in black and blue. The water is slightly coloured, so I'm just trying to provide something with a little tiny bit more contrast. Um, a couple of boats have come past whilst I was just making that intro there. And uh, I'm just going to let the kind of canal settle down. So I'm going to go with this, a little bit of contrast. Uh, the concept, obviously, on the Ned Rig there, um, hooked up like you would on any normal jig head. Uh, the idea is I'm going to be casting it out over to the other side of the canal, um, landing it, letting it sink down to the bottom, and then I'm just bouncing it back towards myself. So hopefully I can uh, find a few fish. The trick with this is not to speed up, not to get bored, not to uh, kind of lose confidence in it. The bite is ferocious and you will know as soon as something takes it. Um, and a lot of the times the bite will happen as the bait is in your mind not doing anything but obviously why that is is the z-man elaztec is floating back up and it's as it comes back up like a kind of i don't know a resting crayfish or a crayfish that's um, about to be attacked they tend to stand up with their with their claws facing the fish it's at that point that the perch tends to uh, to smash the lure so all i'm doing is casting it across to the varying bits of cover um like that letting it sink down feeling the bait hit the bottom like that bouncing it and stopping bouncing it and stopping and just letting it take itself back down to the deck give it a couple of seconds on the deck some guys like to leave it there for for ages and sometimes that will work kind of dead sticking the bait right in front of the fish um, a little bit like you're drop shotting and you kind of leave it there for five ten seconds at, at a go but I kind of move slightly faster than that I kind of can't do that you do have to commit to leaving it on the bottom uh, and oftentimes you'll see the line shoot away uh, before you feel the bite um, if you've not got your line tightened up to the lure so yeah that is kind of how I'm fishing the Ned Rig all the usual rules apply in terms of colors um, you're casting over to areas of cover the same as you would um, with a shad the difference being that you're just fishing it nice and slowly along the bottom right so I've moved down um, to a section again that I've seen on Google Maps which is wider and has a uh, quite a lot of boats parked um, the only downside is there's also somebody who's been cutting their grass and there's a load of grass floating around um, in the section but it's not as bad as leaves so it should be able to fish through it quite effectively um, turning circles walls bridges locks as you guys have probably heard on lots and lots of videos and you know yourselves and have been told by people at the tackle shop and everybody else these places do hold fish and if I'm going to a section for the first time and trying to figure it out as I said, these are the sections that I will go and prospect first in the knowledge that the likelihood is that's where the fish are going to be. So I do all of the normal things, casting down the side of boats, casting across to cover, that type of stuff. Um, I'll probably have seven or eight casts in sections that I think might hold fish um, and then move on if I don't catch any. If I see somewhere that I'm just convinced that there must be some decent fish i might have 16 or so cast might spend twice as long there but if you're not catching you know move on is it's a timing thing it can be the weather it can be the spot the bait fish might have moved if you're not seeing any action if it looks a bit dead 
you know don't be afraid to move on to the next obvious section that you can see on google maps or on the the map of the canal that you found or lake or whatever that you've got on somebody's fisheries website um just make sure that you're constantly kind of moving and and checking out the spots um so what i'm doing at the moment is just casting across to that far piece of cover it, again looks too good not to hold fish trees kind of willow trees growing up through the the canal um i can't actually see any bait fish rising in this section which for me is always a bit of a bit of a red flag but with all of this cover it's definitely a good place to start so again all i'm doing is just bouncing this along the bottom letting it sink not getting it kind of up in the water and keeping it up in the water the key is to get it on the deck bounce bounce get it back on the deck bounce bounce back on the deck um, and just searching all of the obvious areas uh, the other thing to remember which i may or may not have said i can't remember um is don't disregard the middle sections of these canals because you're fishing on the bottom especially as it starts to get colder a lot of the bites will happen on the far marginal shelf as you go down the shelf to the bottom of the shelf and will happen on the near side marginal shelf as at the bottom of the shelf or coming back up the shelf so um don't disregard those places uh you know you've got to fish it all the way to your feet the same as you would bef uh, with a with a shad but the difference i think between this and and a shad is there's a little bit oh there's a fish that's a pike that oh, took it on the drop i'm just gonna tighten up that drag slightly um try and keep my hand high because if it is a pike i need to keep his head up he came absolutely tearing out of that cover on the far bank and smashed that this is the only problem with fishing sections that yeah it is a pike that you don't know is that a pike yeah um you don't know whether there's there's pike but it's not a bad little little pike to start the session on the ned rig not what i'm after but at distance a lot of fun on the bfs tackle so there he is look at that lovely blue fish not ideal on there on fluorocarbon but i have stepped up this fluorocarbon to um this 0.32 mil uh because i don't know whether there's any pike here um i just give myself a little bit more diameter on the fluorocarbon to avoid myself getting bitten off and as you can see that has worked um <laughs> he's trying desperately to get back in there is a lovely little canal jack so and now he's back in um so yeah, so I've stepped it up slightly on the fluorocarbon. As you can see, that has gone through his mouth and that fluorocarbon is absolutely fine. Um, I will now retie this because there are a couple of sections on there where it has gone through his mouth. I'll just retie that a little bit higher up. If I get a lot of problem pike um, and if I do get bitten off, then I will change to, to wire traces. But generally, stepping up the fluorocarbon for me um, seems to work i don't get bitten off very often so yeah first fish of the day let's see if we can find a few more so again in this section specifically you know i've just caught that little pike off the the kind of tip of a very obvious snaggy tree um and i'm just fishing the edges of these snaggy trees um as a starting point um that one is right in there but that doesn't connect me with a fish or a snag i'll be very surprised snag <laughs> um hilarious this is like i said the other problem with with an ed rig is you will snag especially if you throw it into a tree um if you haven't done this this is a way of trying to get the lure out kind of ping the keep it relatively tight and ping the line and sometimes the lure will jump out in this case, it's 100% not going to jump out, which is rather annoying. Um, but I did throw it straight into a tree, so I can't really be that annoyed with it. Um, oh, I know. <laughs> uh, right, so I'm going to tie myself another Ned Rig and uh, let's get back to fishing as quickly as possible. Right, welcome back. Uh, because I've snagged, um, 
mainly from throwing it into a tree, but there is quite a lot of debris that I can feel on the bottom. Uh, I have got these, which is a finesse bullets. These are made by Z-Man. They're a weedless um, jig head. This is in three grams, it's one tenth, so yeah, 2.8 gram. The good thing about this is it's got its lovely little stopper here, which with the Z-Man plastics being that they're so durable, um, you know, sometimes it's quite difficult to get them to stick on a, on a hook shank. So with a nice little stopper, it works really, really nicely. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to a TRD Bugs in the deal. Here it is. Uh, the deal, as you can see, is a wicker color. Kind of nice, shiny, silvery bottom and a, and a brown top. And again, like I seem to imagine these things as they kind of bounce up from the bottom. And as soon as the fish sees a bit of white, that's when I get the takes when I'm fishing the deal. So TRD Bugs in the deal. Um, just to show you how I put it on this jig head. So the, the TRD bugs, when I fish them in a single color on a weedless rig, I tend to get the hook point coming back out into this kind of um, channel in the middle of the body. Now with the bugs in the deal, I like to have this part as the base because like I said, as it rises up, I like that concept in my mind of the white bit being the bit that flashes once they kind of hit the deck. So. Unfortunately, you have to fish this bait with the hook coming out of the um, of the dark bit, which means that weedless, it's maybe not as good, but it's still weedless, still works perfectly well. Um, so put this on the same way as you would with a, a kind of any standard weedless presentation. So hook point through the bait, through the back part of the bait, bring it all the way around over the stopper. Um, these are super elastic baits. So you don't have to worry too much about the stopper. It's not going to break. You can be quite robust with them. Um, find out where you want, obviously, your hook point to come out. Take the hook to that point. Bring it out the back of the bait. Push the bait up. You can tweak the hook point through one of those ribs in the body, which is why I really like it. Just fishes so well weedlessly. Uh, and that's it. On to the Z-Man Bullets jig head. Everything in Z-Man finishes with an S. It finishes with a Z, <laughs> it doesn't finish with an S, it finishes with a Z um, for obvious reasons. So it's the Z-Man Bullets jig head. Um, so I'm just going to tie this one on, get back out there. The canal colour is starting to calm down slightly since uh, the boats have come through. So we've had that little jack. Hopefully we will be able to find a couple of perch. So. That is on there. Don't use your teeth to do uh, to do knots, kids. There we go. That's the TRD bugs in the deal. Bullets jig head. Back out onto the water. Let's see what we can find. Right. So for those guys who want to know a little bit more about the setup, um, like I said, I'm fishing with a Majorcraft Speed Style BF bait finesse rod, bait finesse reel. This rig doesn't have to be on a bait finesse setup. I just prefer to fish on the bottom like this. So you can use your standard uh, light jigging rod. Um, I would say kind of two to 10 gram weights are perfect for it. Uh, I'm fishing a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, which is 0.32 in diameter. So slightly thicker diameter than some of my stronger fluorocarbon, but it's the diameter that stops them from kind of biting you off if you catch the odd road jack. Um, I'm fishing that straight through into a braided main line. I've probably got, I don't know, two foot of fluorocarbon uh, straight into a, uh, it's an HTO eight strand braided main line. Um, and yeah, it works really, really well for me. I like the braid because you can really feel the bites. Um, a lot of guys on the BFS setups will fish fluorocarbon all the way through. Um, and I just, it's all a confidence thing. And for me, the confidence in, is in feeling the bites with braid. So. That's the setup. Like I said, I've got a two and a half gram uh, bullets jig head with a TRD bugs on at the moment, and I'm just covering the obvious bits of cover um, in search of a shoal of larger perch. Fish on. That's a perch, I think. What is that? It's a chub.
All right, so fishing on the deck. Also, catches chub. I tell you what, I haven't caught a chub on the section of canal for a while. There you go. Absolutely crunch that. There you go. There we go. What's that? It's that another chub. There we go. Probably swing this guy in. Well, this is obviously a very chubby section of the canal. Perfectly hooked. Nice fish. Goes to show that this type of presentation is obviously something that the, the predators or the more predatory fish in, in the canals, they're obviously foraging around on bottom for the, for the crayfish that are now everywhere, but also for the, the gudgeon and the roach and anything that is down on the bottom, head down, um, these guys are attacking. So very interesting that we're catching couple of chub I think there's a big shoulder chub over there because I've just had another very similar similar take on the lure just kind of like a slow grab rather than rather than a very attacky bump and when I struck into that fish then there was a kind of considerable a considerable disturbance on the surface so there is obviously a, a decent shoulder chub here there's another bite. I think if I was to speed this up now, I could probably have a few chub because that guy, obviously, they're taking it as it's coming up off the bottom rather than sitting on the bottom. Although the last chub, the bigger one that I had, did smash it on the bottom. So I might be just making it up. Um, well, we're getting into that good time now and there is some lovely structure to fish here. That far side seems a little bit deeper now than than it was before, so fingers crossed. We can find one. throwing it right up against the side of that boat kind of assuming that there's a river that comes out on the right hand side of this lock that comes straight into where those boats are um, I would imagine that the predators will be sat underneath that there you go that's that's a pike jacks everywhere well catch and release um <laughs> another jack there you go look i don't know whether you could hear it on the video but it did go against its teeth and that piece of line is absolutely fine a bit disappointing that it's obviously a bit of a jacky evening I, I don't know whether you guys find but i find once the pike are obviously feeding like this it can be the days where you don't where you don't really get a touch from the perch um not always the case i suppose but I don't know why, I just find if I have a day where I catch, start catching jacks, I seem to just keep catching jacks, whereas there are other days where I'll turn up and, you know, all I'll catch is, is bigger perch. So, again, I could just be talking crap. That's a, there's a high percentage chance that that is the case, that I'm talking crap. Um, so I am, like I've been saying the whole time, I'm fishing the marginal shelves, fishing down the side, up against the side of that boat as you can see from the pike that i just had then that's where i would imagine the predators to be sitting you've got a, a kind of river that comes in on the far side so any fish that come down that river are going to have to swim past those those boats on the far side um 
and I think that's why you've got the perch, the pike, the bigger chub just sitting out for a nice easy meal as it washes past them. Um, it would just be nice if we could find a bigger perch. There's a fish. Feels pikey. And it is. It is Mr. Jack. folded over itself there we go right this guy's really given the the line a good seeing to there but again so I don't know whether you can see that but that TRD bugs is fully intact having just been sent over those extremely sharp teeth um, these Z-Man baits are so durable um, it really is one of those major positives to using them um, you can just fish this thing over and over and over um, and I love it in any other case that creature bait that shad that you catch that jack on would be completely and utterly done and as you can see this thing just stretches takes it and then I can rehook it and we're fishing again very very cool so like I said there's still even though he engulfed that there's still a lot of strength in that leader so I really do have faith in fishing a stepped up fluorocarbon leader um, over a wire trace when you are targeting, specifically targeting perch. Obviously, if you're specifically targeting pike, you know, you either go for a very heavy fluorocarbon trace or, or go for a wire. But uh, yeah, let's get this retied and then um, see if we can catch one. Hi guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope it's been useful, uh, this kind of semi-introduction to the Ned Rig, uh, to Z-Man plastics, and obviously the way that I go about fishing them for, for the larger perch. Um, it's been a tough session to find the big guys uh, and girls, to be honest. I found a few jacks, found some chub, which I haven't caught in the canal in ages, uh, as is the way. If you say you're going to go out there and try and find big fish, like I said at the beginning, uh, sometimes you don't catch any. Um, but I did manage to, right at the end of the session, pick up this slightly better perch. Uh, I've caught him on the on the Ned Rig in the TRD Bugs in June Bug, which is one of my favorite colors, obviously on my Old Baron Speed Style uh, combo. Uh, unfortunately, my camera ran out of battery, as is, as is Sod's Law. Um, so I just thought I'd share this guy with you um, before the light goes. Not a massive fish, but certainly one of the better ones out there this evening. Um, he slash she uh, is probably just under a pound, something like that, pound, maybe just over a pound, that type of range. Nice fat fish, uh, put up a really good fight, absolutely smashed the Ned Rig on the deck. Um, goes to show that, you know, there's no silver bullets catching big perch. You've just got to get out there, try, find new spots, uh, look at the obvious places, the bridges, the cover, the deep spots, um, and try different techniques. So the Ned Rig for me does do the, the trick. There are lots of ways of fishing it, and it is going to be an educational piece, learning different methods and ways to fish it weedlessly, uh, ways that you fish it, obviously, when there's a bit of flow. Um, but as you can see, you do catch some really nice perch. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased with this girl. She's, uh, as you can see, pretty angry from getting caught. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate all the comments. Let me know what you want to see in the next video. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please head across to Instagram and uh, drop me a follow, drop me a message. Uh, any questions, stick it onto a DM on there. Uh, and I will be obviously making another video soon. So have fun on the bank. I know I am. Uh, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.